So when doing this video about building this water filter and testing it out, I did not expect the video to be as long as it was. However, when editing, it ended up being like over 25 minutes long. So this is the second part of that video where we're going to be testing my DIY home-built water filter against two of the more popular water filters that are out there. In case you didn't watch the first video, we are going to be taking the next 90 days to fundraise for water.org to help give water to families in need who do not have access to clean, safe drinking water. So I'm going to put a link down in the description. If you would like to donate like we are, please, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, our goal is to hit $1,000 in the next 90 days. Also, we're going to be giving away this Clear 2O filter to someone who donates $5 or more to the water.org charity. So if you want to be entered in at the end of 90 days, we're going to randomly select one person and they are going to be sent this Clear 2O filter. All right, so you all saw me get this bucket of lake water from the lake not too long ago. I might have been wearing a different shirt because it was a different day. However, this is the exact same bucket filled with the exact same water sitting here on this table. It was just really hot and I didn't feel like filming that day. So in order to perform these tests, I've been using these Verify test strips. These are literally the highest rated water testing strips available on Amazon. Um, and also they've gotten very good reviews just across the internet. So I wanted to make sure we got something that was accurate. Um, and then I've also been doing a total dissolved solids test. Um, and and <laughs> honestly, the water that we've been getting has been ridiculously clean. Even this lake water has very good numbers. But seriously, even with the total dissolved solids meter, like we're getting very within range numbers. So you could pretty safely drink that lake water. It might not taste delicious, but you could drink it. In order to make this test a little bit more accurate, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to use that lake water, but I'm going to add chlorine to it to simulate a municipal water system that has added too much chlorine, potentially, and you've got that nasty, almost bleach-like taste. But we're going to go ahead and add that, and we're going to see if these different filters will remove that taste, as well as the elevated levels of chlorine. and. I'm also gonna add salt. Now, these filters are not designed to remove salt. That's just not what the water filter is designed to do. However, there might be some slight differences in, in the parts per million of total dissolved solids from the water with the salt added to it and what comes out the other end of the filter. So we'll see if maybe they do remove some of the salt. Honestly, I have no idea how it's gonna work. We're going to compare all of this to reverse osmosis purified water, uh, which I've already tested this and like it is perfect. And because nobody believes anything on the internet, I'm going to go ahead and test this water too. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Zero total dissolved solids. The test strips come out literally perfectly clean. So this is as good a water as you can possibly get. And then of course, last but not least, we are going to check the flow of all of these filters with this flow meter. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do to this nasty lake water is we are going to add a bunch of salt. So you saw that we were at 32 or 33 parts per million of total dissolved solids. And then we're back up to 32. I think it was 33 last time. This should bring that up pretty significantly. Don't know how much that's going to increase it, but we're gonna give that a go. All right, so after adding some more salt, oh my goodness, okay, well that number shot way up. Uh, so it looks like we are right around 5,500 parts per million, 5,507 right there. Uh, so that's definitely not salt water levels, but it's, uh, 
it's up there. That's some salty water. All right, so now that we've added the salt, I'm also gonna add chlorine. So all of these filters are advertised to remove chlorine. So if it doesn't remove this, there's a problem. All right, guys, real quick. I know I act like an idiot sometimes and I act like I don't know what I'm talking about, but in this case, I do a little bit. Um, don't try anything like this at home. I used to be an environmental science major, did a bunch of stuff with water. I ended up changing my major to occupational safety and health, and I've been doing that professionally for a while now. Uh, so I've dealt with a lot of chemicals and safety data sheets and PPE. So I, I, I do have a little bit of knowledge of what I'm doing right now with these chemicals, even though this is not how they were designed to be used. So that being said, do not try anything like this at home. Please, please don't do it. Just let me be the idiot, okay? So these tablets are designed to treat 5,000 gallons and this is a five gallon bucket. So I'm not gonna add the entire tablet in here. It's broken up, but I do want to raise it above one to four parts per million, which I believe is the goal for a pool. Um, so I'm gonna put chunk about that size in there and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna let it do its thing and we'll then get a reading on the strip. All right, we've let that small portion of a chlorine tab dissolve. So let's go ahead and get a reading on one of the strips. And chlorine, which is sort of right in the middle there, that is way up there in the pink. So we have definitely brought this water well beyond what you should be drinking. All right, let's check our total dissolved solids just to make sure we're reading about the same. And we're still right around that 5,500 number. It looks like settling in at 5,507. So the real question is now, how do we get this nasty water through our filters? So what I've done is I've actually bought this pump on Amazon that you can connect your drill to, and it actually uses the power of the drill to siphon the water up through this hose and out the other end. I'm going to attach each filter to the siphon pump. I'm going to pump water out of the bucket into this little yellow bucket to kind of get out any impurities or anything that might be in these filters. Um, so that way what we're getting out is clean water and then I'm gonna pump that water into one of these little cups. Honestly, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm a little bit nervous now, but we'll see. All right, so let's start with the Camco Taste Pure. Let's see what happens. Got water coming out. little bowl. That water does not look very clear at all, I'm going to be honest. So, we'll see. Alright, let's go ahead and do the sniff test. Still smells a little, little bit chlorinated. All right, so that's the water we're dealing with out of the Camco Taste Pure. Chlorine level is still way, 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 way high. So that water is not safe to drink. Just kind of what we expected. Wow, look at that. It is spot on exactly where we were in the bucket. All right, so the next filter that we have here is the Clear 2O brand. Now this is the filter that I actually use for quite a while and absolutely love it. It's got a pre-filter in here for sediment and whatnot, and then it's got a one micron solid carbon block filter. Um, so these are actually a pretty good option for most people who aren't gonna be living in their RV full time. So if we were judging just by how the water looks, 
I would drink this water 10 out of 10 times before drinking that water. It's hard to tell on camera, but this water is definitely more clear. All right, let's see if it did a better job removing our issues. Whoa, look at that. Total chlorine level. Look at how, wow, that is a massive difference. I'm very, very impressed with the amount of chlorine that that filter just removed, especially compared to the uh, Camco filter. That's, that's quite impressive. All right, last and I certainly hope not least is my own homemade filter. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and give it a go. Clearly I didn't put this on very tight, so we're having a little leak there, but we should still be able to get our clean water out the other end. Let's see, if this does not do as well as the Clear 2.0, I'm honestly going to be kind of sad. Come up to chlorine. Again, we're looking great. All right, so I will admit I'm not overly surprised with the test results. Uh, I expected these two definitely to perform better than the Camco water filter. But after doing this test, I can tell you there is no situation in the world that I would recommend this filter for anyone. If you're even a weekend camper, uh, the levels of chlorine that came through this filter are completely unacceptable. So even if you're just doing a weekend or two a year, by the clear 2.0 filter. It's, there's no comparison. There's no way I would recommend this to anyone at this point. All right, so all of that said, let's go ahead and move on to the spigot, and we're gonna test the flow rate of each of these. Even though I'm not gonna recommend this, I'm still gonna test the flow rate. So for this next test, I'm gonna use this water meter. I'm gonna connect it directly to the hose to give us a baseline of how quickly water is flowing out of the spigot. Uh, right now, I do have my water pressure regulator on at the spigot, so this is going to be a real-world example of the type of water pressure that these are going to see. All right, we are zeroed out. I'm going to put one minute on the clock, and I'm going to release the valve, and we're going to see at the end of one minute how many gallons of water have flowed. All right, and here we go. <laughs> All right, so I decided to stop it at 30 seconds because the water was flowing out way too fast. Uh, there was, there was, this was gonna overflow. Uh, so in 30 seconds, we flowed 3.9 gallons. So 7.8 gallons per minute is basically our baseline. All right, so in order to keep this fair, I am going to test all of them at 30 seconds now. So. What I did is I kind of pre-primed it. I sprayed a bunch of water out to make sure that water had made it all the way through the filter so we'll get an accurate test. And I've zeroed out the water meter. Hope you guys can see that. Uh, if not, just trust me, I did. All right, so let's go ahead and get our timer started. Now. Water going everywhere. All right. So we have flowed exactly three gallons. So looks like we're going to be flowing six gallons per minute with the Camco water filter. So same situation. I primed it, zeroed it out, and we're going to start the timer now. Definitely feels like it's going a little slower with this one. Yeah. All right. 1.9 gallons. I don't know if you guys can see that there. So, not bad. This is a little bit more cumbersome than the other filter, so I'm not going to hold it over my bucket. Uh, but I'm gonna show you that I did, in fact, zero it out and started. 
like, like oh. All right. Looks like we're at 3.1 gallons. All right, so my camera has now overheated three times. So I'm gonna go inside, take a shower, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, so you all saw the tests, you saw the results. So between the two inline filters, while the Camco filter flowed 37% more water than the Clear 2O, it failed to remove the chlorine from the water. And to me, that that's just not okay. That's not acceptable. So I, I love Camco. I love a lot of the products that they've put out, but at this point, I just, I can't recommend this one to anyone for really any reason. If it failed to filter out the hazardous substance in the water, it didn't do its job. So for weekenders, for anyone who isn't using their RV very often, the Clear 2O option might be the way to go. So between my DIY setup and the Clear 2O filter, and I don't have my DIY setup here right now because it's connected to the RV, these are actually the filters that I removed from it from this test. I would say for anyone who uses their RV a lot or is living in their RV like we are, absolutely going the multi-stage DIY route is the way to go. Because while it filtered out pretty much the same amount of chlorine, it's hard to tell on the test strips exactly how much is left, but they were both well, well, well within the safe drinking limits. They were either zero parts per million or half of a part per million, so they were both great. These inline filters are going to have to be replaced a lot more often. So we have three different stages of filter here, and each stage protects the next stage from the larger particles. So you might have to replace your sediment filter a little bit more often, but honestly, I could probably go six, eight months without having to replace my filters, where using this, I'd probably have to replace it, actually I know I would have to replace it about every 30 days uh, because I have previously used this filter and I loved it, but you have to replace it pretty often. So if you're replacing filters more often, this is definitely the way to go. It's gonna be a lot cheaper in the long run and a lot less hassle. And on top of the longevity of the filters, this flowed 39% more water. So you're gonna have a lot better water pressure in your rig. If you guys missed it at the beginning of the video, we're doing a fundraiser for water.org for the next 90 days. And anyone who donates $5 or more will be entered into the drawing for this Clear 2O filter. It's a brand new filter, never been used. So don't worry, I didn't run a bunch of chlorine through it. So if you guys wanna be entered into the drawing to win this, Go ahead and head on over to the link below. I'll put it in the description. I'll also probably throw it in a card up here somewhere. Uh, but head to that link and donate to a good cause. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.